see? Oh, yeah, okay. I had my hand up for a while. Okay, there you go, Agent. How are you? I didn't see I'm doing you. well. How are you? Okay, now where are you calling from, dear? Um, I'm in America. Okay, now where are you from? I'm from Congo. Okay, cool. How long have you been here? Um, a while, about 20-something years. Oh, okay. Um, and what part of America do you live? Texas. Oh, okay. A lot of y'all be moving down to Texas, man. So what's on your mind? Um, I had some clarification questions for you. Yes. Uh, because you say FBA, and then you say that um, a lot of Africans are kind of piggybacking on what she said, what, what she said was very uh, well-spoken and well-said. Um, kind of the words that you're using, could you clarify? Because she did speak on um, when you were saying that it was kind of like a coward way of moving into America and leaving your country. But mm -hmm. then also you say that there is no hatred, but I'm confused. It's kind of showing a microaggression or at least by the words, because it doesn't give off a welcoming um, space for conversation because you have people that are trying to listen. But at the same time, for those that have have that background, they've come to America. Um, they're experiencing the same type of microaggressions they've experienced when they first came. So I've been here for a while. That does mm -hmm. not say that I'm not going back to my country because there's a lot of things that I'm doing, not only for my people, for my family, for my village, for my tribe, because my family, we're ahead of a tribe. So we're going to do what we need to do. And that's um, basically when we came here, we came here during a war and it was out of our choice. Right. But that doesn't, I understand that you later on clarified that not everyone, but having that type of diction or having that, um, that first impression really didn't like sit right because as a community leader and someone that is expressing unity, it's kind of, kind of a slap in the face because it's like, okay, I'm trying to come into this space and learn with other people, but the way this kind of stabs at me because it's like you have no idea how difficult it can be for certain people. Actually, no, for a lot of people. Let me not say certain people. How difficult it can be for a, you know different countries trying to um, congregate, you know, with folks here. And then also you like or with your addiction, you separate it to where, oh, th over there, over there in Africa, you have these problems, you're slitting throats, and it's tribal. Um, it's giving very much white people describing Africa, uh, because you can say, yes, it's tribal, but a lot of that stuff was made and started by the white folks. Yeah. So we do have an understanding of that white supremacy. And then I think it's also good to say, like Aaliyah said, we can admit that there is a fear there. But with that fear, a lot of strength comes from it as well. Um, because I've seen plenty of African women like back breaking activities to make sure that their family stays on the right side of basically continuing that blessing of okay we are continuing that family wealth we are going to continue the culture that we have and then if we end up moving we're still going to have our culture but we're also going to learn from the people around us so I try to like bring that into this space as well but it's kind of heartbreaking to have someone a leader and that um has this type of pull and has so many people listening to them, but you have these many microaggressions in the way that you speak about Africans. Because okay. I do understand, like there are a lot of Africans that have that mindset because it's been drilled in, but there are a lot of African Americans, or if you prefer to uh, be called Black Americans, I do apologize. Foundational Black Americans. It's foundational Black Americans. Foundational Black Americans, my apologies. Find foundational Black Americans. You have that, yes, I understand. But you are at this very moment speaking of a group. It's a group of people that have a collective mindset, but you can't compare Africa, the continent, and then say, okay, yeah, some people have that, like, as just a way to explain it at the end, when you yourself are only talking about a group of people in America who also have that mindset, but as a collective, as Black people, as a collective, that ain't the deal. Because you still have Black people as a collective that also make the remarks that you make. But on top of that, they still call us African booty scratchers. You still have the okay, Black... Okay, okay, there we go. Okay. 
There we go. Because I was wondering, you kept using the term microaggression and it kept coming across like a projection. That when And then when I hear the African booty scratcher remark, that's always something that's used to justify a lot of the microaggressions that comes from African immigrants to foundational Black Americans. Let's be I'm not justifying it, though. I said I understand that it's coming from this side, but I'm also saying that it's coming from your side as well, from the conversation, or I shouldn't say conversations, from um, what you have said. It's sounding like it's one-sided, but it's there needs very to be one-sided. Let's be clear. Let's it's be clear. not though. But that's the Ma'am. thing. Where is your information coming from when you're saying it's one-sided? It's How one-sided can... because foundational How... Black Americans. Two mm-hmm. things you have to understand. Number one, we don't benefit from African immigrants or Caribbean immigrants or Latino immigrants or aid. We don't benefit from any immigrants coming here. We have no benefit of that. It doesn't benefit us at all. So these are courtesy conversations. Not only do we not benefit, we're the ones who fight the most to help all of you get here. Let's be very clear on that. It is foundational Black Americans who were the ones fighting to get African and Caribbean immigrants over here. White folks were not letting y'all over in large numbers at all. It was us putting the pedal to the metal, making that happen. And we were doing that for one reason only, because we wanted people to come in as reinforcements to foundational Black Americans fighting against white supremacy. We knew you didn't have anything back home. We knew that you were going through colonialism. Mm, pause, pause, pause. That right. We knew you didn't have anything back home. Right. How does that sound? That sounds like the truth, ma'am. That sounds Nothing like the truth. At all? Like, no, what time frame are you referring to? Okay. Okay. Let's be, okay, now we're going to have to deal with truth. What do you have back home that foundational Black Americans are benefiting from? No, no, no. My question to you is, you said, to clarify, why did you say we have nothing? I never asked what we have to um, to benefit you or... Okay, what were you benefiting yourself back home? We have culture, we have people, we have resources. What's your culture? Culture? What's your culture back home in the Congo? What is your culture? I'm Congolese. So when it comes to Congolese people, we are very family oriented. We are also people of um, we have well, that here. We have that here. Yes. But my thing is, my question to you is, why do you keep saying that we have nothing? Okay. You what keep is bringing your, up what the fact. your culture, man? You your keep. Family. Yes, what? sir. But OK, <laughs> right now you're answering my question with another question to justify how no, we benefit you. Ma'am. But my question ma'am, is. Ma'am, hold. You're going to have to slow down now. Now we're going to have to slow down and we're going to have to take this very slow. We're going to take this very slow. Now, you said, well, we have culture. And I hear people say that. What is your culture? Let's stop there and let's take care of that first before well, we move on. you didn't answer my first question, though, because my question was, why do you keep saying we have nothing? What is the nothing? I but asked that- you what you have. You don't have anything of value there because you had to leave, right? No, 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 no. That's not the reason. There you go. So you're saying that we have nothing in value because we had to leave. That is not the choice that we had, that we had. So a lot of people do not have a choice. I had to leave because my father was an American citizen. And because of the war in 98 in my country, we had to leave because of that. It wasn't because there was nothing there for us. Everything was there for us. Our family's there for us. A lot of people still cry to this day because of the way America is set up. And it's very hard to go back home. No, it's not. But there's a lot of us as well. Okay, ma'am. No, you're not going to say something that's incorrect. It is not hard for you to go back home. You choose not to. Let's stop playing. I'm not being microaggressive. Choose not to, sir. Yeah, choose. You can go back home, but you don't want to go back home, ma'am. It's not. I very much. Ma'am, let's stop playing games. It's not popping over there. It's just not popping. Right? It's not popping at home. Is How it? am I supposed to answer if you mute and then you're going to say it's not okay, popular? Because, because I'm not going to let you rant because you want to go on a rant tangent. And Sir, you... it's very much popping. If you saw. How? 
H- how you, you keep muting when I'm actually answering you. Did you not see the whole festival that happened in Ghana, for one? In Congo, when it comes to my country, there are special, I shouldn't even say special. You can go to many cities, and then from the cities that you go to, me, myself, Kinshasa, the first one to go to, beautiful land, landscape, you, there's, you can, um, when it comes to residency, you can buy land. I'm in the process of doing that right now. I'm trying to build another village. I'm trying to go back and build the orphanage that my mom had. So all all of this that is happening you're saying that there's nothing popping back home right. i don't i can't um i'm choosing not to go home no i want to go home i very much want to go home ma'am, but i know in th- ma'am slow it down i'm muting you because you're gonna have to slow down you, um, we're gonna have to tackle what you're saying what you just described ain't popping if you have to build an orphanage that means it ain't popping ma'am let's stop playing you just said you had to build an orphanage. Orphanage is meaning that means it ain't popping where you are. That means it, the parents ain't there. That means parents, parentless kids. Where there's parentless kids, things aren't popping, ma'am. Do the people o- not build orphanages in America? That's my way of helping. You said earlier, you said, what are you going to do when you go back home to help? Everything that I can. So if I myself so problem, okay. have a non-profit. Hey, ma'am, you're going all over the world here. You, you, you're riding the bike in a circle. Listen, I stand by the initial term. I said it wasn't popping there. And we knew it wasn't popping there. Y'all didn't have nothing going on over there, especially right after colonialism. You didn't. And you're sitting up here trying to kind of massage your ego. Nothing was popping over there, ma'am. It's okay to admit that. Y'all get off this stuff where y'all trying to talk it up. What was Look, the rumble the, the, in the jungle? What was man, the rumble in the jungle then? The thing with Muhammad yeah. Ali and yeah, with yeah, with with. Why did they go back home then? Because our brother. I mean, oh, great question, ma'am. Foundational Black Americans, we were the ones wanting to elevate our African brothers and sisters. What we did Muhammad Ali actually what? say? The rumble in the jungle. Uh, what? That's what he said. Hold on, you're breaking up, ma'am. Go ahead. What did Muhammad Ali say in Rumble in the Jungle? It's actually filmed. He didn't say to elevate. He said we need to get in contact and connection with our people. And because specifically of our common enemy here, or I shouldn't say enemy because they're also allies, but that white supremacy that we were talking about. So that is well documented. The Rumble in the Jungle, if people want to see, there's also... um, a concert that occurred at the same time with James Brown. I know, ma'am. I'm very familiar with it. Yes, but there's also a documentary that goes alongside with it, so it has a background. um, I do apologize. The name evades me, but it also has Miriam Makeba on it as well. And um, it basically goes into the conversation that Muhammad Ali had with his manager alongside um, when it comes publicists, and they were talking about how they wanted to go home. And you have these fundamental Black Americans, right, that are wanting to go home to connect with the people in that country. They're not saying that those people do not have anything. It was joyous. It was a very beautiful event. And even within the documentary, they said it. Wow, I would love to live here. Wow, the women are beautiful. Wow, the place is beautiful. Wow, there's so much life. Wow, there's so much to do. So you're going to say that these people, that well after how you said colonialism, like there's nothing there, That that's very confusing. Then why do so many African Americans, as of right now, as of right now have moved back to Africa right and they're living lavishly and they're loving it because there's no animosity like when they're going home or excuse me it's not home for everyone my apologies when they're going back to Africa there's an acceptance there right but there's of course stuff to do a lot of people like to look at Africa and think oh there's only bushes there's no cars we have stuff to do some of folks actually come here because of the way the government is set up my family told me, ma'am, foundational black Americans are not moving over there in large numbers. Let's not go there. You're just saying stuff, ma'am. Foundational black Americans are not moving to Africa in large numbers. And you want to know one of the reasons why? Not because we don't want to build with brothers and sisters there. A lot of those countries over there are not offering really dual citizenship to us like that on easy term basis. Ghana. Ghana, 
that's n- n- don't no. we already went there no ghana has something called the right to abode those african nations don't offer us no dual citizenship unless we come over there with a big bag they have not opened the door for us they have that year of return which is like a uh, a tourism thing. They want us to bring some tourism money and then get the hell on when the festivities are over. They do not welcome us with open arms to live over there long term. Could, the, could you drop the link of the article that you're referring to? Ma'am, you can go to the Ghana embassy page and look up yeah. some of the um, requirements for the right to abode. They want to see um, your bank accounts, your bank statements, you have to know somebody who runs a business and they have to vouch for you. They have to, foundational black Americans have to go there with a bag. We ain't going over there empty handed. If we go over there, they want to see what we're holding, ma'am. Let's not play that game. Those African nations are not welcoming us. Ma'am, I've been over there. You're talking to somebody who's been all over there. I've been over there damn near begging for dual citizenship for foundational black Americans in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, um, Tanzania. I'm over there begging some of the officials, hey, man, why don't y'all have easy dual citizenship? Y'all have all of this beautiful land. Yes, beautiful, very beautiful out there. But all of this beautiful land out here, just spaces and acres and acres of land that's untapped. We can bring capital. We have access to resources over in America. Why don't y'all open the doors for us and give us dual citizenship with no red tape? Nobody was really biting. That's just the reality of it, ma'am. We can sit up here and talk all that kumbaya shit. They weren't biting on it. And that was the least they can do for us because we don't get anything from this whole Pan-African thing. This Pan-African thing has been one-sided. Pan-African is basically foundational Black Americans fighting to get everybody to come over here and eat off us. That's what it's been for the last 60 years. It has been one-sided. Did you say that one more time? Or, excuse me, rephrase that? I said Mm -hmm. Pan-Africanism, the Mm -hmm. whole Pan-Africanism thing has been Mm -hmm. one-sided. Sided only. Us over here Mm -hmm. fighting to help everybody come over here and eat off us and we get nothing in return, ma'am. Is that true or not true? So earlier you said that you were fighting to bring us over so that we can all work against white supremacy. Right. But they said, fuck is all that, that true or shit? not true? Is that but true then, or not But true? then you said, fuck all that kumbaya shit. Is that correct? Ma'am, is that true? Okay, you deflecting means I'm going to take that as what I said was true. You deflect. No, I'll you take that as you admitted time. that I said you it was true. questions instead of answering my question oh, oh. and it's crazy because the people that are listening are also commenting to me and telling me yeah girl i see you but okay that I, don't makes sense. I don't know who's doing that but yeah i asked you a question and, and it's the like, muting when i'm responding as well that's no no no. i'm not gonna let you rant ma'am because you're just kind of going all over the place and i want to stay on topic because you, you you're deflecting a lot ma'am you're doing a lot of deflecting ma'am yeah. and I, I just want you to be on topic here okay what's the topic go ahead Okay, the topic was Pan-Africanism, ma'am. Mm-hmm. It is one-sided, is it not? Um, I don't think so. Okay, what have you done over in the continent to welcome foundational Black Americans in large numbers? In large numbers? Um, mm-hmm. Connect them with my family, and then connect them with families in other countries as well. So we have some... Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but we have some uh, families that have started either oil companies or they're attempting to start agricultural companies, but we're um, going from state to state. So they're basically families here in America that are also considered fundamental black, African-American. They have different titles. Some of them say African-American. I just want to clarify that. And we have worked together and we are building back home, but it's not in just one country. It's multiple countries within Africa. And then we also are opening up that line of dialect or excuse me, not dialect, that line of communication to where we are bringing that problem that we have, where we both have to have that discussion that, hey, I know my people or people from the continent where I'm from, they have a lot of things against you, but it's because of what's been. And then same on this side as well. And having that line and understanding and not using derogatory terms or saying that things are one-sided and just having that 
open understanding that let's have this conversation because if you continue to say things are one-sided you're going to have more people that are going to have closed ears than open ears more people that are going to have closed hearts than open hearts so what's the point of having a platform and having the ability to actually make change if all you're going to do is create more uh, turmoil because that little piece of doubt that is what starts a fire it just takes one little spark to <sighs> Ma'am, this is why I mute you, ma'am. You just said a bunch of nothing. I'm trying to be as polite as possible. All you did, ma'am, was spew a bunch of catchphrases. You just said a bunch of nothing burgers, ma'am. You literally sat here and just threw out some word salad. I asked you what y'all doing. And you start making up some stuff about some oil. You're just making stuff up off your head, ma'am. Yo, some oil and your family and connect. We got to get together and let's not have some doubt. Ma'am, this is called babbling. This is called babbling, ma'am. And what, what it is, a lot of you want to get in these spaces. And you know you're not really bringing anything to the table. So when you don't bring anything to the table... Y'all try to babble in order to mask this fact, ma'am. And that's the thing with us. We don't really like people coming around babbling incessantly, spewing a bunch of word salads and nothing burgers, knowing that you're not really bringing anything to the table. That's very passive aggressive. Hey, you keep saying that we need to be together, but then you also... Talk Man. about Africans as if we are a commodity, as if we are the slave to your movement. But that doesn't make any sense here. If we okay, now those kind of projections is that not how you projected? That's a projection, ma'am. And again, uh, like I told the other gentleman from the motherland, that gets into the lying, scamming stereotype that I don't want y'all to do. Don't lie. For all my black people fundamentals out here, I love y'all for real. Foundation, for real, for real. Found, foundational, foundational, not fundamental, foundational black Americans, ma'am. But don't, don't start lying, though, ma'am. That's so beneath you. How am I lying, though? Because how are you supposed up, to know my truth? You're telling me that I am a liar. Yeah, because yeah, you you're making stuff. I'm, how am I making that up, though? You're projecting. How did I make up that my family is doing an active effort to build the community within my village? I can also drop a picture right now if you want to see how my granddad's a chief. So if you want the proof, the proof is there. We got pictures, we got documents. But if you want that, it is there. The same way I asked for the link, I can drop a link. But my question is, how am I lying? You a person I just... Okay, because you... Okay, let's going back to your granddad because you lied about something else and then you took it back to your granddad. So your granddad building something in the village, what does that have to do with Foundation of Black Americans, ma'am? I said my granddad is a chief. You said that I was a liar. So I brought up a fact and then I said I have a way to prove said fact. Now you're asking. Okay, ma'am, you're deliberately just bouncing all over the place. What does somebody building something in your village have to do with us? Let's try this again, ma'am. You asked me originally what I was doing back home. So then I answered with, we are building. And then now you're asking me, what does that do with the um, organization, right? But my original question from way, way back was, why is that the question, right? I asked for clarification. And why is it so transactional? And then also I asked you to clarify why you said fuck all that kumbaya shit, right? Why? Like, this is, these are your words. I'm just repeating your words, but then you're saying that I'm bouncing. But I just tie it back to you, your original statement, and then I answer correctly, and then you say that I'm off. So I'm confused here. Yeah, you're just babbling at this point, ma'am. You're all over the place. You're literally all over the place, ma'am. And you're just spewing word salad. Because I think you know what I'm saying is pretty correct. And if we're going to talk about microaggressions, the microaggressions comes from your side. It ain't no African booty scratcher talk. Black American adults don't talk like that. Oh, very much they do. No, they don't. 
Let's yeah. don't tell that lie on Foundation of Black. Grown, grown black folks ain't running around here calling nobody no damn African booty scratcher, man. That's something that children used to do in the 80s. Kids don't even do oh, it. No sir, more. I can go to my school right now, a college, a university. So many, so many teachers. There have been so many, like, legit, all you have to do is turn on the TV. You can even turn on the TV. what college do you go to? Why would I tell you that? <laughs> okay, because I, I, want, I want you to really flesh your lie out. No black, foundational black American in college is calling you an African booty scratcher, ma'am. That's just not true. That was one term as an example I've had, I've been called that multiple times, yes. And then um, I do no that. Black didn't call you an African booty scratcher, man. How do you know that? Because we don't talk like that. As you day. say we, but you're talking about the collective group that yes, you surround I am. yourself we with. Talk like grown, you're talking about the group black of Americans people don't you surround like. yourself with. I'm talking about black people in Especially general. Ma'am. No college-educated, foundational Black American is going to run around using an infantile term like that. We don't even talk like that, ma'am. I know my culture. I know my culture. And that's a lie that a lot of people come over here with. But isn't that the same argument that I have? I know my culture. And the way that you're saying that we have nothing back home, and I'm saying that we do, and then you say, no, that's a lie. We have nothing back home. Ma'am, ma'am, during colonialism, let's go back. When I said you had nothing back home, I was really referring to the colonialism area, right? When colonialism and imperialism was getting erased off paper, you didn't have anything. You didn't have anything over there. It was nothing going on. We knew that. We knew what the, what the issue was, and we wanted to help brothers and sisters. But you jumped out this bag. Oh, we had this, and we had beautiful. Last, can you rewind when he said you had nothing you after had. colonialism? Now you're saying we're going back to when colonialism just stopped. Oh, this thing's recorded too. Dr. It Chris. is recorded. It you is can go recorded. back. But I'm saying now, you don't <laughs> so have can't... nothing popping now over there. I'm saying that now. Now, like right now. So right like now, if you Google, you don't have it, nothing. Nothing. Nothing is really popping like that right now. What is your okay. definition of now? Pop? Let me say this. Where would you like me no, to no, okay. give you let me let me say, let me say my words and you not try to reinterpret it. You know that's what's your example of popping though? What I'm is popping? What is considered popping? I want you to let me talk. I don't have a problem telling you exactly what I mean. Okay, just you, answer that quickly. You have something, oh, ma'am. I got it. Now let's be very clear. You do have something in Africa. All oh, the resources yeah. are there. All the resources are there. You do have something. I wouldn't tell a lie. You got all the resources on the planet right there in Africa. Your little words were nothing, but okay, go ahead. Okay. But what all is, the resources no, popping. are popping. What is but your definition? When I say popping, pop meaning you ain't doing a damn thing with it. That's what I mean. You ain't doing nothing with the resources there. The whites and the Asians are. That's why you ain't got it popping. You're trying to get it over here instead of getting it over there from the whites and the Asians. That's what I mean, ma'am. Okay, is, let, me break, true let me break down a business mentality that a lot of people from Africa and also from Europe do, right? Uh -oh. So you send two to three family members that will collect and come and work in America to get that American money because the way things, you know, change when you have American money and you go to Africa, it's going to be more. So you have the two to three people that are also here that are getting a college degree, as I was trying to say earlier, getting a college degree in America because, wow, things translate when you go to Africa. Even if you have a college degree in Africa, you come here, it's going to be equivalent to a high school degree. So the smart... What is this woman talking about, family? What is she talking about? Am I tripping or is this woman babbling? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, ma'am? You asked for the purpose of coming over here. So I'm providing purpose, structure, plan. Get to the point, ma'am. We do not want to sit here and hear you babble in circles. It don't take all that. You can get to the point, ma'am. It don't take all that for you to get to the point. Get to the point, ma'am. The point is, in Africa as a continent... There is a lot there that is very thriving, beneficial. People are thriving, but people also have choice. The white people and Asian people are thriving, ma'am. 
most of the black people are not, hence why many of you are leaving, right? Isn't that the same for here? Hence why African Americans are leaving, right? Where are we leaving? America. Literally, just Google it. Just- what are you talking? You're just saying anything. Ma'am, are you trolling right now? Are you trolling, ma'am? We're not leaving Thank y'all here. for the support and the following. Oh, I'm not trolling. I'm just um, we're not. We're not leaving. Foundation of Black Americans are not up and leaving nowhere. What are you talking about? You're just saying anything, ma'am. Okay. Um, so when it comes to this space, because at this time we are going just back and forth. When it comes to this space, what is your goal out of this? Truth and clarity, which you're not providing, ma'am. You're being very deceptive, which is the problem. You're very deceptive, ma'am. How so? Oh, my goodness. You're just saying anything on this phone, ma'am. You're just literally saying anything. You're just making up stuff and just saying it just to be saying it. How so? You you just sat here and said Foundation of Black Americans are leaving just like you guys are leaving Africa, which is a blatant, bold-faced lie, man. Why would you even say that? And you knew that wasn't true. When, when you do that, ma'am, that really nullifies a lot of seriousness in your conversation, ma'am, because that's a bad faith argument. And when you get into bad faith arguments, it's kind of difficult to take other stuff that you say seriously, ma'am. And I try to, I'm trying to give you a platform to seriously lay out your points. I'm being very fair. But when you make a bad faith argument like that. Wait, you said that you're trying to give me a platform to lay it out. But whenever yeah. I explain, if you mute me or you mute the people that are speaking, because you're not going to just babble and waste our time because that's a, a weaponization that a lot of people do. They weaponize time wasting and just talking in circles and then changing your story and then making I you're stuff. You're describing yourself. No, no man. Time- Asked you a question, you've either muted me or answered with another question, ma'am, and then also questioned how African. Ma'am, you're doing it now. You just want to talk in circles, and I mute you because there has to be order. You see how that works? See, we we can't just let things be all willy nilly. See, that's the problem. That's that's what was happening back home, ma'am. Things were just willy nilly. Things just all over the place. No structure, no order. People just doing stuff to the point where everything collapsed. And then you had to leave. So we're not trying to have you bring that same chaotic mindset over here to our circles. So we demand that there's order. You see how that works, ma'am? I'm sorry, continue? Yes. I'm just letting you know how order works, see? As foundational Black Americans, we, we kind of want order in circles like this where we're trying to have constructive discussions. But just babbling in circles and contradicting and, and flipping things and just saying whatever, that's, that's not something that's acceptable in these types of spaces. And we won't allow you to just do that. So that's why there will be a muting of non-constructive dialogue, ma'am. With, with respect, though. Notice I'm been, I'm very respectful to the conversation, not not name calling or not being um, disparaging. I'm letting you say what you need to say. But well, you called me but, a liar, though. Well, you me. were telling a lie, ma'am. You, you How? told a lie. How was it a lie? You How? told a few lies on here, ma'am. Which, How is it a lie? Okay, specifically ma'am, because ma'am, you told a few lies on here, ma'am. Okay, let's go by the first one when you said that i was lying about my family building why is that a lie well you started talking about all of this oil i said what are you doing with foundational black americans and how can we benefit and you start talking about some stuff no you didn't say benefit this is recorded um also you You start talking about some oil and all of this you were making it up as you went along it didn't even sound right so you were not being honest about that ma'am and then congo is the highest um when it comes to coltan oil diamonds and gold i know that how am i it 
the fact that it literally tracks by the country and facts, like it, you can just Google it and it's there. I know that, and you are not over there. You're in Texas. You're yes. not over there with all the diamonds. As I said, gold, family, man. you send two to three people here man. for schooling, and you have the family built and continue. Then I provided examples. When you asked me again, how am I doing it with people here in America and then also within my country? And I provided those examples, and you put to say that I was lying again. You were just talking, ma'am. You were just saying stuff that a lot of people say. Everybody, uh-huh. everybody oh. says the same thing, ma'am. They, I'm over. It's the, I call it the Prince of Zamunda. Everybody says the same. What? But isn't doesn't that show a collective mindset of building? But a lot of folks say the same thing, but they never build it. I don't. You, you never see it. They say they come over here and do the whole Prince of Zamunda thing. But yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm Donna, working at I'm over here. Donna, I'm, I'm over here working at Taco Bell, but back home I got a big oil factory. We got diamonds, we got gold mines, I got elephants, I'm a prince, I'm a you can say my dad is a prince, my dad is the leader of the village. You if y'all oh. want to see my granddad, the chief, I'll go ahead and drop that on my Twitter. Go ahead and follow me. Um and then when it comes to this whole Prince of Zamunda thing, right? You're saying that everyone says that. A job is a job. I'm not degrading anyone or whatever type of job they're trying to get so that they can support for their family back home or even build back home. Do what you got to do. A job is a job. But you cannot discredit or like undermine the sacrifices that people have done because I'm not just talking about my sacrifices and my experience. I'm talking about the people that I see, the people I'm so proud to call my. What sacrifices have you done, ma'am? You immigrated here. The people who sacrificed were found black Americans to build a country that you could come to. So what sacrifices did you do, ma'am? All right. Sacrifices, me personally, I'll go off by me. I, my high school year going into college, worked three jobs to make sure that I could buy the full land back home. Right. So there's that. On top of that, my mom worked two jobs when our Basically, it was a domestic abuse situation. But when my parents got divorced, my mom worked two jobs before even learning English, right? And she taught me that mindset and that workspace. So, okay, that's not sacrificing. That's just working. That's just working a job. That's not sacrificing. What are you talking about, ma'am? You're just saying anything. You just got some jobs. You came over I'm and started working. Done. Though you muted me, I am I, because you're just okay. saying stuff. Right you're there. saying that working a job, like That's you're the, saying, just it, working a job, man. What are you talking about, sir? You don't even know what field, what was being done, how a, a person That's was sleeping. Sac- they- That's not a sac- That's not a sacrifice. That's a come up. You were able to come over here and make money. That's called working a job, man. That's not a sacrifice. What are you talking about? What in the world are you talking about, ma'am? You are just saying anything, ma'am. You're just saying words, ma'am. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the dictionary definition of sacrifice. Oh, ma'am, that type of circular babbling, it it just don't work with us over here, ma'am. It, it's, we... But I feel like everything is on your terms and your definition. Yes, it is. Because we can't. Oh, okay, have- now I'm understanding. Okay. Because, so we, because at home, ma'am, you failed. That's why you had to leave. And we cannot have you bring I, a failed yeah. mentality. I'm actually here. prospering pretty well. We were forced to leave by um, Americans. Well, whites uh, specifically. But. Mm hmm. Yeah, but yeah, you you had to you you bounce, you had to flee because it wasn't wasn't popping, and you were able to come here and make money, ma'am. To That's home, which a lot of us do actually. Well, most of you don't. Most of you ain't ever going back there. Let's be clear: you leave there and you never plan on going back. Let's stop all of that. We're about to build this and build that because they would have done it already. But you asked me specific. Okay, so why wasn't it done? Y'all been saying saying that for fifty years. But there is proof in the pudding, though, because the countries that 
I have brought up, have ha- had some significant improvement, but then you also have to think about Man, what you're going against the as improvement. Well, it's not yep. going to happen. The improvements come from Asian investments. Ma'am, please. Uh, ma'am, the improvements come from Asian investments, ma'am. It's not that you're sending anything back. Y'all don't be sending stuff back like that. Y'all just don't. You don't. If you were sending, sending if you were back. sending if you were sending so many resources back, you the people there wouldn't need those janky Asian investment loans where the Asians invest money what and then take over the airports and take over. From. Ma'am, what do you mean where I get the information from? Yes, I, please then, drop a link. You, you're saying janky investments as if sometimes you say some, sometimes you say all, sometimes you say where. Where is this coming from? Janky investments, meaning these Asian corporations go over there, or Asian groups or whatever. They go over there, mm-hmm. loan the people money. Hey, give us, we'll give you a loan to build up your infrastructure. Okay, right there. You- I wouldn't say the people, because we have an understanding, Africans as a collective, that government, yes, we understand that is corrupt. Same way government is corrupt oh, here, but of course boy. it's 10 times, 10 times. So don't say the people. It's not the people. It's, it's what? Government. Oh, Lord, did she go there? Did she go there? Hold on. Government. It's the 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 government. The government. It's the government. It's the I like government. There are older people that are college educated that don't use terms like that, but you still play music as a basically a comeback, like a child in middle school. The government. It's are we going to see each other at the lunch table? It's oh. the government. Okay. All right. So there we go. That every time we hear the government, we have to play the government song. Lord, it's like a broken record. It's literally like we we just literally made a record called the government because of that government excuse. It's always the government, the government. We can't get nothing going on because of the government. Lord. I'm not that we can't get nothing going on. We are trying. It's the fact that you're reminding the people that are actually attempting. Same way that there are people attempting here. You cannot dismiss that there are people attempting there as well. And that there are people collectively working together on both ends. Now, how are you attempting when you flee? In? You can't do both. You can't attempt to fix it's something. It's not you fleeing. Flee. It what is, is okay, fleeing. When you say fleeing, fleeing is running away, right? That's exactly what it is. Okay. I'm not running away. A lot of people are not running away. There's a thing of working smarter, not harder, right? Yeah, if you running don't have faster. the ability... Hmm? Running faster, ma'am, and that's what you did. You ran, and you're in Texas right now. Nice and comfortable in Texas, where Foundation of Black Americans had to fight and build this nation and fight for Black folks to enjoy. I, run, I provided you the information that it was not my choice to come here. How am I running? Ma'am, it was your choice. You chose How? to flee. You fled. You got your ass away. No, 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 no. I provided the information. Ma'am, please. My father was a citizen. Uh-huh. So we had to come here because my parents were married. My mother was pregnant at the time. So we had to come here because that was the law. My father, as a citizen of the United States working in Africa at the time, they made everyone working for that specific company come back because my mother was his spouse. Because she's pregnant with me, we had to come here. They, so that's they, what just, they they created a protocol in order for them to flee successfully. That's all that is, man. They didn't have to do anything. They put that in motion. They fought for that. That wasn't something that just dropped on them. They fought to get the ability to flee. They wanted to flee. They signed up to flee, ma'am. Let's stop playing games. And it's not popping back home. The Congo is not the business right now, and you know it at all but it's the business for asians and white people though when they go over there they're living good they got it popping over there why don't the black people have it popping and the whites and the asians who are a very small minority why do they have it going on over there you know what okay i'm going to answer the question it may raise more questions i would love to hear this i gotta hear this okay so you asked me why do they collectively have it popping 
This is only an opinion of mine. Uh huh. Clarify that because I do not want anyone to think that I'm saying a fact right here. But I think it's because when it comes to the Asian communities that have moved and have successfully moved into multiple countries, it's because they work as a unit, right? Mm. So they're able to work as a unit and then they're able to conquer. Because I see that mindset that the Asian community has and you see how they have developed and grown within America as well. And I commend them for that because when it comes to that community, they have it. And even if there is that territorial divide, because there is, as we say in Africa, the tribal divisions, they also have the cultural and tribal divisions when it comes to Asian countries as well. Um, And when it comes to building, though, or having that um, um, communication when it comes to business, A lot of that is put to a side because there's the understanding that you're going to make more, you're going to prosper, and we can build more if we do this. So that that I feel, for me, that's my opinion on why they're so successful and how they've been able to go from country to country and do so. But Congo, I understand that there's a very large Chinese population within Congo. That is very true. That right there is a fact. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm aware of that. But I understand the mindset they they have, and I've seen how it's um, been put in action. So I understand how they have gotten so successful to this point and how they have been able to do that. Exactly. Now, that's the realest thing you said on this whole phone call. I agree 100 percent that the Asians who go over there. They work as a collective group, even though they are the minority there. It's a small group of them compared to the dominant black society over there. Mm, I wouldn't say it like that. I wouldn't say it like that because you have to think about it. They're going there as a collective group, but do not undermine that it is a business. There have already been contracts. Everything has been signed. There has been multiple, like multiple, you can look at the articles on NPR, I believe Washington, uh, Washington Post also did this, where there are collective people within Congo fighting for their land that has been passed down from generation to generation because it has been signed over um, just by, this is why I brought up government, because it has been signed over by government to those companies that are United States companies, either white owned or Chinese owned, and they're collectively working towards that. That's why I said, don't just lump the people into that um, category saying that the people aren't doing anything. When we say government, it's true because a lot of us are fighting back. And you can even say now, I feel like Nigeria is a prominent example. Um, You have this generation of folks, whenever, um, the police within Nigeria started, I shouldn't even say started, it's been like this, but it was on a rampage, killing people in the streets, stealing their cars, Um, government officials knowing about this, but the people were in the streets protesting, fighting, trying to get social media on this. That way it actually raised the light to it and people were looking in Africa and seeing what was going on and seeing how the young people are fighting for our land and wanting more safety and wanting to progress and have more um, of a say when it comes to government proceedings because we are trying to do this. So that's why we say government. We always say the government, the government is the people. The people are the government. The but, people okay. are the government. Okay, but you are providing, okay, that's your mindset because you have the experience of America. Here, the people are the government. But there are some places where dictatorships are still a very prominent thing. Or even just, um, I'm sorry, the word evades me, but what, uh, when it's uh, your lineage. Um, so it can literally be the president, president's son. That is still something that continues to go on. So How's that different from over here? How is that different from the United States government, which is the most oppressive government in history? Nothing is more impressive than the U.S. government. They got their military is a thousand times more powerful than the Congo military. No government is more oppressive than the U.S. government and foundational black Americans stand up to them all the time. That's why the government talk is some bullshit. We go up against the real government. In your home and you have a Twitter conversation going on and you are actively talking against or saying what you can about the government. 
There are literal countries. This would get us killed. <laughs> so how can you say that, you know, America is the toughest, this, that, and the third, and we're going against it day by day. There are people that go against it day by day and will literally get killed or shot or hurt. And they have become political activists. They're known in the world. Uh, Malala, she's a prime, beautiful example of a woman that spoke out against her country and wanted to speak for the um, truth of women for the um, education of children and women as well and she got shot in the head so and she was so y'all scared. i'm sorry go ahead so, so y'all scared no i just said that those are examples of people fighting against the grain and still fighting against the grain ma'am malcolm x got shot martin luther king got shot Yes, but I'm saying people are getting shot right now. That don't you mean are, you're providing examples of people that have done it and done it well. Yes, amen, hallelujah. But I'm talking about people that are doing it and doing it now. But you also said to me that we're not doing anything. But I'm giving you examples of people that are doing it. And if you'd like, because from what it sounds, or at least earlier you said that the definitions here are by your terms. Okay, I understand that. But you should also maybe open your mind and go and research not only just what goes on your For You page, because it's cultivated of everything that, you know, you've seen. It's for you. So everything you see on Twitter, all the new stuff, it's for you. Okay. It's you're ranting right now. All right. All right. Bring it back because you're going on. you ranting. you ranting. You, you kind of babbling again. All right. Got to bring you back. Come on. My point to that is, is if you open your mind and look, you'll see that there are people that are fighting. It's okay. not nothing is happening. There are people that are actively fighting to this day right now as we speak. Uh, but you're talking about the government and well, we can't do nothing because the government, the people. No, I never said we cannot do nothing because right. the government. I said if you could please refer to it as the government is not attempting to, not we the people, because you said the people. I said no, not the What's people, the... because a lot of the people are fighting. Okay, what do you think consists of the government? The government is made up of who? And that's why I brought the examples of how government or how people... The government is made up of who, ma'am? The government is made up of who? Who's the government made up of? Depending on the country, not the people. Depending on the country, not chosen by the people, not for the people, depending on the country that you're referring to. That is the point that I'm trying to make. So who then? Who, who, who runs the government if not the people? It's the dictatorship. It's the collective of the 1%. It's the people that are in the pocket. Okay, okay. Now, listen to what you just said. The 1%. The 1% is running things over there. How come the masses don't go over there and take it from the 1%? What? What do you mean, how can the... What? Why don't the masses uh -huh. go take what they need from the one percent, ma'am. How can that question be? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Black okay. Foundation of Black Americans are mm -hmm. only twelve percent of the population over here. Uh -huh. Got it? Uh -huh. We said the hell with all of this deprivation of resources, and we started fighting for uh -huh. the little resources that we were able to get. That's what I mean. If we 12% of the population can fight the mightiest government and the people and the so-called dictatorship or whatever you want to call it for the resources that we have right now, mm -hmm. why can't the majority of these people take it from just the little 1% of their government back home? It's not the little 1%. You're acting as if it's just people sitting in an but office that's what you said. and everything. But that's what you said, ma'am. You said 1%. That's, I'm just going back. Said, it's the same how there's a 1% here. You have 1% people here that have hands everywhere. You have hands with people that are corrupt, that can very well get you killed, get you missing, things of that nature. No, you got white supremacists. Over here, we have something called white supremacy. You have hundreds of millions of white supremacists. But that's also there this. as well. White supremacy still has a very hefty hand in yeah. Africa. I do understand that. I agree. Yes, they uh -huh. do. 
But so how, how is a collective of people just supposed to run up and take from the one percent? Oh. These are the same one percent that have deals with guerrilla warriors, or excuse me, soldiers. These are the same uh one percent that have deals with a uh, uh, white supremacists here in America that are providing them with weapons, that are also providing them with um, the uh, connections that they need with any type of business. So yeah. I'm just confused how, come, how we're supposed to run up and take it. Uh, yeah, because it's more of you and little of them and they're the minority. That's why. That's how so you So since you said that you're 12%, have you completed your task since it's a small group and it's not as big here? Because if you're having the same mindset, shouldn't you be completed with your task? If us as a big group have not completed our task, but we're still very much fighting on it. Okay, your correlation makes zero sense, ma'am. You didn't even think your correlation out. You didn't even calculate your correlation, right? That's why it didn't make any sense, ma'am. We're 12% of the population, mm -hmm. okay? Meaning we're a minority over here, but we still have to fight the majority of this society to get anything we supposed to get in order to punish people. We have to fight these folks in order to put these race soldiers in jail for us to get the, the little resources that 100%. We, yeah. I agree with that. We, sure. we got to get busy and we're, we're a small minority mm -hmm. up against the mightiest army in the world. Mm -hmm. No army is mightier than the U S government, the U S army, the military, no, the most powerful thing on the planet. We stand up to it with a minority. That we know. Okay. Y'all sitting over there and there's how many black folks in the Congo? What's the population of black folks over there? Which Congo? Um the one that you're from, that your family from. It's tens of millions of people over there. Black folks. About seventeen. Yeah. And what a few well, thousand population. Uh, that is a population and a few thousand Asians and whites and the Asians and whites are living pretty good over there especially in places like South Africa I've seen it the whites over there are living very good and they are a tiny minority and they live right across the street you're acting okay but it's a tiny minority that is benefiting from years and I mean years of white supremacy and so that that structure, it's going to take time to break. And it's not just because we have a lot of people, the people that are fighting, you can't undermine their fight because a lot of what you've said is nothing is happening. We are doing nothing. But that undermines the people that have currently died, the people that have died in protest, the young people that have sacrificed their life, the people that stopped going to school and boycotted education. Yeah. In order to prove a point. Uh, Ma'am, it is a psychological colonization. Let's just keep it a buck. The people there are psychologically colonized. When you are the majority and small groups of people can dominate you as a majority, they've colonized you mentally. Over there in the Congo, instead of... Wouldn't you say the same thing here? Because it aren't white people, those, uh, the, which we call it, not the majority, the, um, the word raise me here um the white people are that here as of right now but they're still dominating so that's the same white, white people are the majority here sweetie what are you talking about oh no what in america what are you talking what majority in america what are you talking about sir you don't know oh lord ma'am White people are the majority of the 1% and the space is taken when it comes to officials, governments, politicians. Yes, in that case. But when it comes as a collective, as a uh, race, white people are not the majority. They are dwindling down because we have so many interracial relationships, right? So stop. Stop, ma'am. Ma'am. You don't know what you're talking about. White people are the majority in America, ma'am. I don't know what you're trying to say. White people are the majority in America, ma'am. You're just making up some type of democratic, democratic, uh, um, some type of statistic. I don't know what you're making up, ma'am. I don't know where you're going. 
you're just making something up out of thin air. The demographics of this country is white people are the majority, ma'am. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know that. You don't know that white people in America are the majority. I don't know where you're getting your facts from. Currently, I'm reading an article on NPR, but it's whatever. Ma'am, what what's your article saying, ma'am? What does your article say? Who do you think is the majority in America? Sorry, I was trying to get back to this page. Okay, so right now, let me go down here. Do, 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 do. This is how the population of white. Oh no, this is how the white population is actually changing based on the new census data. August twenty second, twenty twenty one. I can send you a link if you like. NPR. It's by Hansi Lo Huang. Um, Ma'am, you asked the information. There's the information. I can read it if you'd like. Man, white people are seventy six percent of the population in the United States. Do you know that, ma'am? There's 76% of the population. Where are you getting that info from? United States Census Bureau. You go to the United States Census. Go to census.gov, ma'am. It's right there. There's 76% of the population. Do you understand that? You can go and look it up. And this is common knowledge. I don't know what you what race did you think were the majority in America, ma'am? What 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 race did you think were really what what did you think was the majority race here? Oh, I didn't think there was a majority race. I wasn't going to say that there was one that I know of. I knew I know that it was dwindling down when it comes to white supremacy and having that being the dominant race. But you said whites were not the majority, so that would mean another group is the majority. So what group did you think was the majority? I didn't. That's what I'm saying. So you're just making I, stuff up. No, I knew for a fact that it was dwindling down because I was reading the article. Right. I'm asking but, about dwindling down. We're talking about the current population. What group did you think was the majority or were you I just making something was, up? I did not specify. Okay. I did not pick a group. OK, so you were making something up. So, you no, knew. I was reading you the article and then I was providing you the title and then I was going to provide you the link. And then you asked me the group that I thought. And I said, and I'm saying this full heartedly, I did not put one group at the top. Why? Because I didn't finish the article. OK, so, ma'am, in this country, in the United States, there's about, uh, I would say, 200. Oh, I'm, I'm not replying to y'all on Twitter. What the heck? Okay, about 200 and something thousand white, I mean million, not thousand, what am I saying? 200 and something million white people. I want to say it might be around 253 million white people in this country. You know how many black people are here? I feel like you're about to tell me, go ahead. 40 million, give or take, 40 million. You didn't know this, ma'am? Hold on. I mean, Sorry, I was dying. Sorry, go ahead. You said what? Right, ma'am. Yeah, you should have known this information, ma'am. So again, we're well, talking I didn't about what you about said. That, so, all right. So again, it's a different dynamic here. And again, we're vastly outnumbered. We're okay. outnumbered by a couple of hundred million. We're best bet, and we still stand up, and we don't punk out. And but we're not punking out either, though. But you got brothers over there while these white supremacists and the Asians are up there living off all the resources, living good. You got the damn brothers, the Congo dandies running around there in suits and slums. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're saying oh. running around. You know, that's like a cultural thing. It's a sense of pride. Because it goes back into the 70s when it comes to the war, right? When uh -huh. Congolese people had to go and fight, they brought back new things that they understood. But it was that sense of identity. Because, of course, you had white people that are coming and living here. You had Congolese people that went to France. And at that point in time, it was for a lot of black folks the first time that they were seen as equal to some white people because in France they were allowing them to eat in um, the restaurants they were allowing them 
to live lavishly. They're allowing them to smoke with everyone else, right? So when they came back into the country and they got, you know, that European sense of style, they also put that Congolese twang to it. There are multiple documentaries when it comes I know to about, trust me, I already know about them. But so, how can you say that they're just running around because that is uh, a, along the culture, like that is a root for some people. Okay. And that is a so, part of um, pride. Okay. So, so walking How around, insult that? Uh, that um, it's it's insulting because you got the whites and Asians eating up your resources, and you got grown ass Negroes running around in slums in zoot suits, running around mm-hmm. having fashion souls. That's not See, a good. Look. That's why I said it's the mindset of the white because the way you're look. saying running around in slums, running around, saying, that's they, exactly what they're doing, ma'am. No, but they're not because they the are Andes, the La the Congo the Congo dandies, and I want the black family here to look it up. They run around in slums, dressed in three-piece suits, having little fashion shows in the slums. Is that a good look? For Instead those that of- don't know, if you'd like to look up the Congolese dandies, there are beautiful documentaries that are out there, right? And it's not just that. You have the Congolese dandies that also raise awareness and funds for either orphanages, groups, organizations. You have the people that work for churches. It's a way to um, have camaraderie, the same way people have cookouts or they have uh, community um, um functions where you may have dances and stuff like that we do that too and that's a part of what we do the same way over here uh when you have the jack and jill right that's something that we do so you have a collective of black people that are together it's showing our pride in our culture it's a thing that we continue on from generation to generation because it's also bringing that textile from generation to generation because a lot of those um you have the people that may do the la sap as a lot of us call it la sap they weigh they wear the designer clothes but then you also have the congolese dandies depending on the area that you're at um, that wear textiles that are passed generation to generation. So a lot of them are either made by hand or made by an elder within that community. So having that, you're showing... How about you wear one of them suits to go get your resources from them Asians and white supremacists? How about that? Oh, done deal. I have five in my closet. You want one? How about you wear one of them suits to go get your resources back from the people over there, that small minority, instead of y'all sitting over there in the slums and the Asians and whites over there living good, wear that suit to go get your resources back. How about that? Wouldn't that be some more, good. wouldn't that be more culturally appropriate? Are people not allowed to enjoy life and to continue cultural, um, significant, like, um, things that are happening the same way people do it here? Are we not allowed to do that? Yeah. Are we not allowed to have that type of peace and continue to um, provide that to the people that are coming after us, having that generational um, wealth in culture? Because when that dwindles down, when that dilutes, then you lose who you are. So we want to make sure even while we're struggling, we still have that foundation. So, yes, you have the fighters, the people that are going to speak against government. But you also have to have the comedians, the people that are going to praise, the people that are going to dance, the people that are going to pray. So why do they have to stop? Why can't they coexist? Why can't y'all fight? the white supremacists and the wannabe white supremacists on your homeland. But we do. Of course, uh, you don't because y'all leave the first chance you get, ma'am. And that's why. No, not. Okay. And the dudes over there now, you're talking about all these orphanages. You got dudes over there in Dapper Dan suits running around in slums and not doing anything about the resources that's being taken away by a minority group of people but they are doing things and i provided the examples there's yeah. even the people that do it to raise awareness the same way if you're here and let's say awareness you have to who? Or, 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 raise awareness to who 
So a lot of this, or I shouldn't say this, a lot of um, activism is done by social media. Raise awareness to who? All of you are aware that you're in slums. So who are you going to make awareness to? Awareness to who? Um, awareness of what? What are you talking about? Awareness to folks that can also help with the funds. Uh-huh. 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 <sighs> the same way people raise funds, right? You have to have a way to grab people and pull them in, to make them open their hearts, to make them understand, to have an um, an open ear to help, right? Just because something is happening, as you said before, I did agree when you said that the mind is colonized. Yes, that is a very big fact for a lot of people. And you know what the other problem is, ma'am? Another problem is the tribalism. All the different tribal and ethnic groups over there, y'all still hold on to that while these people dominate you as a group. And people are still, the Black folks are still holding on to those ethnic and tribal differences that's long outdated. Do you understand that? Okay. Um, So, like I said, when it comes to that mindset, I wasn't finished. Uh, when it comes to our mindset, I do agree with you. It's very colonized, but you still have to work your way in uh, collecting people to fight for your cause. Because it's not people are just going to automatic- automatically stand there. Because there are probably people that were, are in your cause. That Why don't they put their tribal differences aside and all of them fight for their own cause? That's all they have to do. Just say, we're going to put this tribal stuff to the side for a minute so we can neutralize this threat that we have taking all of our resources. Why don't they do that? That would be the most sensical thing to do. Ma'am. Okay. Um, She's quiet here, but again, They should raise awareness among themselves. You are the majority. You're 17 million people there. A few thousand people are collecting your resources. They're living good. They're not defecating in the streets. They got paved roads where they live. They live in nice homes. And while the black people over there living in slums, dressing up in fluorescent three-piece suits, running up and down the slums, Maybe y'all can stop doing that and deal with that white supremacist problem right there when you're the majority. Get the colonization off your mind. See, I don't, I don't want to hear people explaining, talking about the government and all that stuff. Foundation of Black Americans, we deal with the government. My mic is off. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry. I, I was I talking. My mic okay, was yeah, off. I didn't mute you. Yeah, I didn't mute you. Well, go ahead. No, I went to a different screen. My apologies. I was oh. getting t- um, people from this group. They were uh, tweeting me and then it muted. I'm oh. sorry. Go ahead. Okay. But yeah, I was just saying um, they um, they should get off the, uh, the tribal and ethnic group differences because that's a major uh-huh. thing. All of those different ethnic and tribal groups uh-huh. there, they have to put that aside. Why don't they just put that aside? And say, hey, we have to work together as a group against this minority threat that's dominating us. Wouldn't that be the most sensible thing to do? Put those ethnic differences aside? Because they're outdated anyway, right? Yes, I understand that completely. My thing is, or okay, I understand that it's kind of going in a circle now. My main argument was to not just say that we're not doing anything uh, because it basically is dismissing everyone that is actively attempting to do something. Right. That's all. Okay. All right. All right, sister. Anyway, so we've had a very interesting conversation. So I tried to keep the conversation as respectful as possible. So hopefully hope the, the, the listeners have learned something, but I appreciate you for your input, beloved. Thank you so much for calling in. I try